UK Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Here, uh, bike B1 equals to new bike. So what basically happens? A new object gets created, right? So this is somewhere uh, in the in the heap memory. If this is your heap, and somewhere in uh, the heap there is an object which is getting created. All right. Now, the moment I say a new bike of, uh, let's say when I say new bike, okay, what happens? Basically, in your bike, if you see here, uh, by default, if you are invoking your, I mean, if you are using just your uh, new bike, basically your default constructor is going to get invoked and the value of petrol, the value of name and the value of length will be five bike and 10, okay? So here I'll be creating an object here uh, whose value is five, uh, this is bike and this is 10, all right? Now if I create one more instance here by saying bike two equals to new bike of 10, that means I'm basically creating a new bike Okay, there's a new bike object instead of five. Now the value is 10 here, right? And this is your D and this is your, let's say 10. So this is the value of the petrol. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Now, what is this here? Okay, when you say new, okay, new of 10, that means you are basically creating an object here. Okay, but what is this? This is a reference to the bike object. That means Somewhere you have a bike here, okay, B-I-K-E, bike one, and bike one is basically referring to your this object. So what you have is, you are basically having a handle to a particular object here. Now, how do you access that, or how do you refer to that particular object in the memory? You basically say bike one dot petrol is liter, okay? Now, if you do not have the reference, can you call that? Now, I want to access, uh, let's say I want to access your uh, petrol liter or I want to access all the other uh, properties of this bike okay so there is no way I can access it uh, if I do not have a reference okay we have other ways but here with the help of the reference itself I'm able to access it okay now what is the other way I can access it here so remember folks I mean this is a reference to the object so this is somewhere this is the reference okay so with the help of this reference I'm able to access the object okay so if I say bike uh, two here, right? So this is your, I'm going to create a bike two, let's say here. Okay, this is your bike two. And bike two is basically referring it to the memory address of your second object, okay? So whenever I say new, a new uh, space is going to create it, a new object is going to get created. And the, the reference out here on the left-hand side is basically referring it to the object here, okay? Now, if you can see here, uh, I just created a bike in this way even uh, and after creating the bike with the help of the reference. Okay, so this is always I say it is a reference. Okay, so with the help of the reference here, I was able to access the properties here. All right, now I can even access it in the other way out the moment I, uh, well, let's see how to access that. I can say sysTrace and plus I will simply say, let's say, new bike dot okay petrol liter okay now what i'm doing here with the help of the bike itself the moment i created an object i'm trying to access the properties in it okay so right click run as java application all right so i'm i'm able to the moment i created an object i was able to access the properties of that particular class okay now this is all about i mean directly accessing your your properties here so now let's talk about uh, a different data type now here what is the data type uh, okay. 
Um, Jerome, just a quick question. Where are you getting the value five? Is that assigned to petrol liter? Uh, here, if you remember, I'm just muting you. If you remember in the in the previous class, uh, as we have got multiple constructors, right? So if I, okay, there's a shortcut here. You just say control and uh, click on this. You directly go to the constructor, okay? So here, if you see, uh, when I say new of bike, you are saying this dot petrol liter equals to five, this dot name equal to bike, and this dot length equal to 10, okay? So you have, as you know, this is the one you give some default implementation or default value to the uh, properties of this particular class. Okay, so if I would have called this one, let's say I'm going to call this. Okay, so here in this case, I'll just say uh, 50, right? So when I say 50, that means here I'm going to get the value as 50. No, this is not the good way. Yeah, the question here is, is it a good way to create class instance every time to call corresponding methods from the class? No, this is not a good way, but this is also a way to create it, okay? All right. Yeah, just one more question, Jaram. How does by client class know that it needs to reach out to the other class by class to obtain the value for control? Uh, so your question is, how does the by client is able to access your by class, right? Yeah, the by class. How does it know you where, where the by class is okay. and where are the values are for petrol liter? Uh, right, so we still have a lot of discussions on that, but uh, on, on this note, I'm just going to, going to say you that here in Java, if both the classes are in the same package, okay? Now, as of now, just understand that your class by client as well as the bike are in the same package, okay? So you're able to basically access it, all right? We'll even see there are a lot of other discussions also wherein if uh, there are in different packages and we have different access modifiers, in that case, we'll not be able to access a couple of things, okay? But as of now, since your bike client and the bike are in the same package, so I am able to create an instance of your bike in your bike client, okay? So this is how basically Java, Java has been designed. You can access the classes inside the same package or even outside the package, which we are going to have a discussion later. Okay, all right. Uh, now, here I'm saying new bike. I'm saying new bike here, okay? And then dot petrol liter. So let's say what's going to be the value. For sure, my value is going to be run as Java application. So then my value is going to be 50 here because I'm invoking a constructor with a, with a parameter in it. All right, so this is how basically uh, uh, your, uh, I mean, your, your program behaves, all right? So any questions on this? But again, this is not a good practice of doing it, okay? This is, but this is also a way of doing it. But again, the, at, at one point, sometime you don't have to create an instance because you know that you just need to uh, invoke one particular value, okay? You don't have to do that in that way. So here in this case, I know that I'm, I'm just in, interested in the petrol liter, okay? If I would have been interested in, uh, let's say accessing other properties also, I'll just create one instance here and then try to access other properties also, something like this, okay? So petrol uh, bike one dot, uh, let's say name, all right? So this is the way basically I will access it. I will never say again as new because the moment if I say, uh, to Saroja's question here, if I say something like a new bike dot name, right? So what happens? It is not basically going to access your uh, same object. It is going to create a new object here. And after creating a new object, you're trying to access the name here. All right. So it is, if you want to refer to the same instance here, right? So the, if you want to refer to the same object here, so you just need to create a uh, reference to it. So a reference in the sense, you're referring to a particular, I mean, you're creating a, refer a reference object, okay? So if I just name this as your, uh, instead of bike, if I say it as your reference bike, okay? So this is your reference of a bike, bike object. All right, the same thing, you can even have uh, the naming convention for other bikes also. Okay, so uh, keeping this in mind, and keeping this in mind that, okay, whatever the things you have it here, it is kind of a data type, okay? I'll say 
reference bike one. So what is reference bike one? It is of type which kind of data? It is of type bike one. Okay. So when I say int i, right? What is int? Uh, what is i? i is of type integer, right? So here the reference bike is of type bike. So bike two is of type bike. All right. So keeping that in mind, uh, let's move ahead. So what I did is I have created a package here that is your enum uh, enum example. So let me go ahead and create a class enum example. Okay. And uh, let me have a public static void main. Now, uh, we are going to talk about a new data type right now, uh, which we haven't spoken about. Uh, we are going to talk about something like as enum. Okay. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a data type as enum here. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, public enum, let's say, I'm going to say here as month. Uh, Month is already present somewhere. Okay. We'll do one thing. We we'll just take this out for now because as you know, we cannot have two public classes at the same place. Okay. Now here I have declared an enum as month right now and let me give some value to you. Okay. Now in this, I know that months belongs to January, February, March. Okay. And let's say April. Now, I have given only four data, uh, four months here, right? Now, how do I access this? Now, each and every month are of a kind of data type of type enum, all right? So I'll say here month, okay? So the way I have, if you see that in the previous session here, when I say I've created a bike class, okay, that is what you have it here. And I'm just having a reference to it and I'm just saying new of bike, okay? So that means reference bike one is of type bike. The same thing here, I'm going to say month, uh, let's say J A N equals to, I'm here in order to access the month, January, I have to say month dot Jan. Okay. So what I did ultimately is I created an enum data type. Okay. Enum class. Okay. Basically, you do not make it as a uh, make it as a class, but enum uh, you it's is of type uh, a particular data type. Okay. Now here, if I just want to print this, is trace plus Jan. Now let's see what's going to be the value here. I click run as Jan application. Okay. Now the value of Jan is your J A N in capital letter, right? If you make it this as January, right click it. run as Java application. Okay. So here, what I did is I created a data type here, or I created an enum here and I have given a, I've created some values here. So the same value I'm trying to access it here. Now let me make this a short here as J A N. Okay. Now, uh, uh, I want basically to say here is uh, the moment I say month dot January instead of J A N I want to have the complete name to it. Okay. I could have even uh, done it in this way. J A N U A R Y the way I did it in the previous example also. Okay. Now what I can do is I can have a constructor for this particular enum type. Okay. So what am I going to do is I want to say, uh, something like if I access J A N, I want to know the value as uh, January. Okay. So what I have to do, I have to use a constructor for this, right? The way I have used a constructor here, the moment I say bike, okay, new bike, I basically hit the constructor the same way. The moment I say month dot January, I will hit the constructor and I will initialize it with some default value. Okay. So I'll just say here as, let's say January, all right? Now I haven't defined the constructor here. So let me go ahead and define a constructor. Okay. So what I did is I have created a constructor right here. And let me say this as string name. 
okay and uh, let me do the same thing for others also this is your february this is your march and this is your april okay now what am i going to do is i am going to how do i access these values now even if i say let's say right click run as uh, java application right i still get it as january okay now but i basically want something as january as a complete name right so what i have to do is let me try to create an instance variable the way i created it for the bike right so in the bike uh, class i created something like petrol liter name and length okay now in this enum class example i'm going to say uh, let's say okay so let me simply say as string value okay so i'm going to say this dot value equals to uh, let's say let me make this value itself here all right uh and then how do i access it if i say january dot value right right click run as java application right so what i can do is the moment i call this month dot january what happens your constructor is going to get called why because you are basically calling this one and this one is been called right the moment you call this your january as a value is being passed to your constructor here okay and then this value is been initialized with the value of january and the moment from your main method or maybe from your external class the way i did it as a by client if you access your january dot value you will basically get the value of the complete value okay now it is uh -huh. i'm sorry just one quick question how does the program know Mm -hmm. That it has to uh, pass the value of January to that value, V A L U E. Right. Okay. Now, as you are invoking this one, right? Now, here on an enum, on an enum, if you see, I'm invoking this. As a result, it basically invokes this. Okay. So that is the beauty of en enum here, right? So, but in the previous cases, if you see your by client, or let me just copy this uh, right out here. copy it in your bike itself make it simple format okay now here you know the moment you invoke this your uh, default constructor gets invoked the moment you invoke this one your parameterized constructor with only one argument gets invoked right but here if you see here uh, in your enum right the moment you invoke this you say month dot january right so you don't have to create any instance of uh, to access your variables here instead you can directly say month dot january so the when you say january so this one gets invoked but this is been associated to a particular constructor okay so as a result this value the january gets initialized to the constructor here okay so when you say anything here your your this constructor is going to get invoked because your enum okay but it's is kind of a class and you are creating a constructor for it okay the same thing here in the previous example okay so here in this case bike when you say new of bike your default constructor is going to get get called but here in this case when you say january the january is associated to a uh, to a constructor and as a result your this constructor is going to get called here okay so that's all automatic that is the way uh, your program behaves basically okay is that is is that pretty much clear Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, there is a question here. What is the purpose of uh, use of enum class? Okay. Now, uh, here there is a good purpose here, which we are going to discuss in short right now. Okay. Uh, maybe in the up upcoming sessions. But here, as I spoke about the constructor in the previous class, I thought, okay, it's a good idea for us to understand. Okay, there is a class enum. Okay, and how to use it all right so here uh, usually let's say now 
uh, I know that usually you say month as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. What is that string value for? Uh, okay. Yes. We'll discuss. We'll discuss about all those things. Okay. Now, uh, let's say. Um, Uh, in your program, okay, in your program, somewhere you are checking that uh, if uh, let's say I'm going to say int i equals to zero, okay. Now I'm saying here if uh, i equals to equals to zero, right? I'm saying that is out uh, month is January all right now the same thing I'll say uh, else if If this is equals to one, I'm going to say it is February. Now what's happening basically here? You are trying to access something like uh, zero, one. It is okay unless, uh, I mean, in the previous world it was okay. I mean, I say zero means okay, January, one is uh, February, uh, two is uh, March, uh, four is your April. Okay, so let me even copy this and paste it else else okay so if one two and three here right now tell me is it is it a good practice if i say uh zero one two three i mean uh, if if suppose tomorrow you have written already you have written this code and you are uh, very good I mean you know what it is I mean what this what this functionality is okay all of a sudden after one year uh, you by yourself will open the same code you will under you will not understand why did I add something like i equals to zero right now let's say this is uh, you you're you're doing some logic based on if i equals to zero that means you're passing a value zero that means which is your January right. So instead of doing this, what I want to do is I want to have some meaningful name to a value which I'm comparing it, right? So I want to say this as, uh, let's say, I want to say something like, uh, okay, so this is zero, this is one, this is two, and this is your three, and let me change the data type to integer here int okay and let me take the change the data type here also int okay now what did i do instead of zero what i can do here is i can say uh, month dot jan right dot value so is it not so meaningful saying here that uh, when you say zero and you're saying month dot January. That means you are checking something like month dot January here, right? So this makes really good sense for me when I say uh, month dot January or month dot February or month dot March or April. Okay. So this is one of the uh, important use of having your enum data type instead of uh, having some value which will which will not be easy to maintain or understand down the line. You basically use uh, enum data type okay and even enum uh, will even talk when we talk about constants i will try to compare your enum with your constants also okay all right so this is uh, one of my use uh, we, are, we are going to have still more uses uh, as well down the line we'll talk about those things in the later session so what is it, uh, what is what is so different this from arrays um array is a, of a, sig a similar data type okay now array you cannot compare array with this one uh, you array is something like you have some bunch of data in that and you iterate that okay uh, can access month dot january uh, 
okay let's see this okay there was a there's a question here yes is it's a it's a it's a class okay so you cannot say something like uh, jan equals to something like this okay so this is not the way you are going to define a enum data type okay the values in your enum so the syntax for doing that is something like this itself okay january february march april so let's say you are uh, defining a coffee here enum coffee right so you are saying uh, you are going to say uh, what kind of uh, what kind of coffees i want i want a small coffee or i want a big coffee or i want a medium coffee okay so you are very specific that okay my class is of type coffee and what kind of coffees i have okay so if that is a class why don't we have public or private access on it now uh, okay let me create a class by itself now as in the previous sessions i have already told you okay there was a question here if that is a class why don't we have a public or a private access on it now uh, in the previous uh, sessions even we spoke we cannot have multiple classes uh, with the same public specifier if i say public uh, hello okay public class hello uh, it is going to give me an issue here saying that uh, the public type hello must be defined in its own class all right Now, for that reason, we basically remove this, okay. And if you want to still create a public class hello, you can basically create the the public class hello somewhere in the same package or any of the package saying hello example, right? So when you say public static void main, by default this class is your public class, okay. So if I want to create an enum right now, I can say new. Uh, let me come back here and I want to delete this. Okay, let me delete this and right click new class. So I'm going to say coffee and finish. Now if you see, this is your public, sorry, hang on. So I'm going to right click and say new enum. Okay, so there is already, you can even directly create the class and name it as enum. But there is already an option C O F F E E. Okay, and if you can see here, there is no option for you to create a main class here, main method here, right? So just say finish here. Now, if you say finish in its own class, and then you can have a public act specified here. Okay, so I can just say, uh, okay, let me not do this. Uh, I'll just say small big large medium okay now if you want to define some uh, default values you can very well uh, over use a constructor in order to initialize some values to the to the coffee object okay so this is all about your enum we will still uh, stay tuned we'll have a lot of other discussions also down the line uh, when to use enum and stuff and all uh yeah coming on to amit your question yes uh, we cannot do that in that way okay uh okay you're saying final static class month uh yes we can have it in this way also by giving the data type uh, in that case yeah see okay there was a question here why not to have a class something like this okay i can say public uh, some class here right and in that class, I can define a data type as, uh, let's say, string January or string February, right? Now, initial days, we were doing it in this way itself, okay? So we, we were basically doing it in this way. We were basically making this as final and we were, uh, okay? We were making this as final and we used to do the same thing, okay? But in contrast to this, okay, your enum has come into picture. So this is just kind of a, what I mean, just kind of re replacement instead of doing it in this way, I have done it in the other way out. Okay. Uh, does enum treat the calls as how the normal class is called? That is, it is it creates an object. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. 
Um, now let's let's talk about something on the inheritance. All right. Now, as here in the bike class, uh, we basically spoke about uh, a bike in general, right? And uh, now let's say I want to create a class or uh, uh, something like your Honda bike, okay? Or uh, let's say uh, what are the other bikes? Bajaj bikes, okay? Now let me create a new package now. New package. Uh, enum, no, it's not an enum example. This is your. Okay, you are still using the same. Okay, yeah, you can just replace that. Uh, give your uh, folks uh, an option to use the enum data type so that it is more clear and very crispy also. Um, there are still more advantages. I'm going to say you uh, not now, but la later down the line as well. Okay, now uh, we are going to talk about your. Let's say super example. Or let's say extends example. Okay. Uh, so now let me try to take some other examples right now. Uh, Okay, so let me say a class human finish. Okay, so this is a class human, uh, and here I'm going to say string human. Okay, string name, uh, and uh, okay string name and then uh, int height and uh, string occupation okay or let's say country uh, now I'm going to have a constructor here, so let me have a constructor. And in this constructor, let me give some default values to these uh, properties. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say name equals to, okay, I don't want to give any name. Uh, okay, name equals to, let's say human. And uh, height equals to, Let's say 10 and country equals to okay. Now, uh, apart from that, you guys know uh, we can even uh, have the uh, other constructors also. So let me copy this, paste it here, and I'm going to say uh, string name, comma. String in height comma string country and I'm going to say this dot this dot this dot and the same thing I'm going to copy it here and paste it here okay now uh, I'm good. I'm good here right now. What am I going to do is I am going to create a new class. Okay. Which is basically going to inherit your H2K emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K emphasis how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus 
one time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes h2k emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide for a free demo class visit us at h2kemphasis.com